Okay, so turns out last time I recorded this, I didn't have the microphone on. So, take two. Okay, I have no ideas of what to make for YouTube videos, hence why I don't really make YouTube videos anymore. So, I'm going to give this a go. Whether it continues or not, don't know. But it's something that I wanted to give it a go, and I figured, why not? I did a Twitch stream earlier this evening, and played this deck and I've got two games recorded uh, so I figured I might as well show those off while I can. So quick backstory in terms of the Pokemon trading card game. I got into it end of 2015 after I came back from America. Something that I've always wanted to do and yeah got into it and then played through the game, been to a few competitive tournaments and by a few I mainly mean one. Um, Managed to get top 8, finishing at 7th seed before getting knocked out in the top 8 game. That was alright. Um, I do like playing dark decks. Uh, I, got top, I got top 8 with a random dark deck that I put together. And I figured, why not show off Umbreon GX. Uh, actually, fun story. The local trading card game shop that I used to play at uh, decided to close down uh, December last year. So I currently don't really have a place to play competitively uh, at the moment. And... Well, I kind of want to keep up with the game, so I figured, why not get into Pokemon Trading Card Game Online and show off a few decks that I like playing. I will say, as a quick disclaimer, I'm not a big fancy Pokemon YouTuber. I don't have all the cards accessible to me. I'm very low on tradable packs, and getting these Umbreons, oh man, it was quite difficult in terms of at least, I had to use up a lot of packs to get, to get these. But I digress, let's get into the deck. So the deck is a dark deck, yeah, featuring Umbreon GX. Um, Umbreon, new card, new GX, probably my favorite GX from the Sun and Moon base set. Uh, Umbreon is also one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, so I'm definitely glad it's playable and really good. So first attack, Strafe. You may switch this Pokemon upon your bench po one of your bench Pokemon for 30 damage. I played against a lot of Umbreon decks in the mirror matchup and just in general, and a lot of decks are playing Wobbuffet, and that's the Bide Barricade Wobbuffet. Um, basically, when Wobbuffet's active, it stops all Pokemon abilities except Psychic abilities. Kind of annoying, especially if they strafe and go into Wobbuffet. I have considered playing Wobbuffet in this deck, but couldn't really fit him. And the idea of using Wobbuffet is cute, but I don't really find it overall that necessary. Um, I better get into Eevee first. So we've got Eevee, the new one from the base set, uh, Sun and Moon base set, with the ability Energy Evolution. So pretty much when you attack a, attach a basic energy to Eevee, uh, you get to search for an Eevee Lucian of that type. Uh, it's pretty good. So turn one, you can attach Dark Energy to Eevee, evolve straight away, boom, you got Umbreon. If you're going second and, I don't know, need to get your Eevee or Umbreon out of the active spot, Energy Evolution, you strafe, retreat to something else, you don't mind taking some damage, and you will be set. Running a 3-3 line, um, I did originally have a 4-4 line, but then I figured that was a bit too, a bit too much. You're never really getting out more than 3 Umbreons, and even most of the time you're only getting out 2 at a time. So... 3-3 three, three line's fine. I did consider a 4-3 line at one point, but then I needed the card space, so I decided to settle for a 3-3 three, three line. Running to Shaman, because Shaman, it's good. At least until it rotates, so yeah, it's good. Um, set up, play it to the bench from your hand, draw until you have 6 cards in hand. Good ability, always will be. Uh, yeah, it's just too good. Uh, so I decided to go with some alternative attackers, and by a top... And by that I mean putting in Evil Tile. Just one of each. Um, Evil Tile, Oblivion Wing's always good. If you start with it, you can always Oblivion Wing. 30, attach Darkness Energy from Discard Pile to the Bench Pokemon. It's good. I don't really use it that often, but it's there. Maybe I might swap it out for something else. Maybe that Wobbuffet that I mentioned before. But for now, I like Evil Tile. I like having that safeness of being able to bring energies back if you need them. Also playing Evil Tile EX, also a really good card, always has been, always will. Evil Bowl is a really strong attack, 
20 plus 20 more damage times the number of darkness energy attached to both active Pokemon. Really powerful attack. Y Cyclone's also pretty good. 90 and then move energies. Um, yeah, and Y Cyclone, darkness double colorless attack cost is the exact same as Umbreon. Dark energy plus double colorless. Oh yeah, I never actually finished explaining Umbreon. Um, yeah, I'll get to that now. Uh, so Umbreon, what makes it good is, oh, well, it's really good, um, Shadow Bullet, 90 damage, and it does 32 opponents benched Pokemon. Um, the attack is pretty much a successor to Darkrai, if it will show up. It might not, nope, because I'm playing in standard, so it's not going to show up. No, it's not. But there was that old build, uh, old attack. Knight's Bear, pretty much the exact same thing. 90 and 30 to the bench. Except with Umbreon, it's got an easier attack cost with Darkness Double Colorless. Makes it easier to pull off, all you need is a Dark Energy and at least and a Double Colorless. And yeah, you can be hitting that 90 and 30 damage. And lastly, Umbreon has the Dark Call GX attack. And not too familiar with GX attacks, they are new. Uh, you can only use one GX attack per game. And yeah, Dark Call GX. Umbreon says, discard two energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon. No, from your opponent's Pokemon. And you can do that any way you like. It can be from the bench, it can be from the active spot. Um, I didn't think I'd actually be using that GX attack too many times, but it's really good. Discarding two energies from your opponent's Pokemon is really good. It saved me multiple times. It slows your opponent down heaps, depending on where you discard it. Um very good ability and it kind of is going to combo well with the following cards as we'll get to so originally in this deck i had bursting balloons because i wasn't too sure how i wanted to make this deck um you can't really use fury belts um because i don't work with umbreon and i didn't feel like putting fury belts in just for evil tail was overly worth it so originally i had four so originally i had four bursting balloons but um, this evening while streaming, I decided to try out some more energy disruption. So I took out the bursting balloons and some other stuff and decided to put in four crushing hammers. I wanted to keep up that whole uh, energy disruption. And I feel like that's needed for this deck to succeed. I've tried this deck with the Evolutions from Ancient Origins. And by that I mean putting in the Flareon, Vaporeon, and Jolteon. Uh, that's add types so you can hit for weakness. I I like this idea. I still think it can be good. I want to test it a bit more, but I haven't really had the chance because I want to I want to get this one uh, a bit better. But yeah, I mean they're good, but I still feel like energy disruption is the way to go with Umbreon. So I've got four crushing hammers, one enhanced hammer, and I've got the good old team flare grunt. I feel like for a dark deck it's fitting. Um, these cards go well, especially with GX. Uh, it slows your, They all slow your opponents down, especially if you can get those head flips. And yeah, it's good. What else have I got? One escape rope, because everyone plays escape rope at the moment. It's really good. Uh, I don't make any decks anymore at the moment without escape rope. I feel like it's just really good. Really good right now. Four max elixirs. I'm on the fence about this card. I do like it. It does help you accelerate energies quicker, especially if you've got a bench of EVs. Um, Max Elixir, look at top six cards and attach a basic energy you find there to a basic Pokemon on your bench. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. So if, you know, you bench multiple EVs and you use EVs ability, turn one on one of them um, and then play Max Elixir, well, you can only you can only use this ability once per turn. You can only attach one energy from your hand once per turn. So, I don't know. Max looks like I find it useful. It's pretty good. At least I think so in this deck. Nest Ball, it's really good. I originally underestimated this card when I first saw it. But being able to search for any basic Pokemon and put it onto your bench is really, really good. So you can basically search anything. You can even search for Shaman, but I don't, uh, I don't recommend you do. Because Nest Ball puts the Pokemon directly onto the bench and not from your hand. And Shaman's ability only works when you put it down onto the bench from your hand. So Nest Ball is good. You can search for Eevee, Evil Tile, and Evil Tile EX. Nest Ball, I think two is fine because I'm running four Ultra Balls and four Ultra Balls is 
Ultra Ball is still the best searching ball you can use. It's it's re it's really good. Running one special charge. Originally, I didn't have special charge in this deck, but you need DCE in this deck. Um, and with a lot of energy disruption at the moment, you need it. Um, if anyone else you're playing against has you know crushing hammers and enhanced hammers and team flag grunt, you definitely need the DCEs. And I feel like special charge helps this deck continue to just attack because if you have to attach multiple darkness energies then you're not doing well <laughs> so darkness dce i think with special charge i think it's the way to go running one super rod just to get back the energies and the evs and umbreon pieces that you might need i think one is fine i don't think you need more than that four ultra balls as i said before Four Veer Seekers, because four Veer Seekers is standard, it's pretty good. Get any supported card from your discard pile back into your hand. I'm um, just going to take a quick pause. You might notice that I'm not playing any Trainer's Mail. I'm pretty sure I had Trainer's Mail whoops, uh, in my original version of the deck, but I took it out because I just needed card space. I would like to fit it in, but I can't find the space. And at the moment, I'm fairly happy with how the deck is at the moment. Uh, I'm playing one Parallel City. I feel like every deck at the moment, or most decks, should have at least one Parallel City. You never know when you might play against Rayquaza or Mega Gardevoir, or if you want to get rid of your own Shamans. But Parallel City is really good. Being able to limit your own bench size, and maybe, or your opponent's bench size, and being able to uh, reduce damage of Grass, Fire, or Water types. Reverse Valley! Um, this is really good. I think 2 is good. Um, being able to hit for 100 damage with Shadow Bullet can be pretty handy, especially if you're playing against the Mirror. Uh, Umbreon does have 200 HP, so being able to hit for 100 damage does come in handy when it comes up. So I think, yeah, 2 Reverse Valley is pretty good. So basically you deal two, 10 more damage with your Dark Pokemon, and the other side is Steel types take 10 less. Um, but that never comes up. So yeah. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, playing one Hex Maniac, because ability, shutting down abilities is pretty good. Um, I think he might, s yeah, it's it's good. It's good. Two Lysander, because two Lysander is pretty good. Um, and Lysander is really good. Yeah, pretty much needed. Three in, four Sigamore, pretty standard draw supporters. One Team Flare Grunt, just continuing, yeah, as I said before, with that energy disruption thing and yes yeah, it's pretty good four dces and eight darkness energies i originally had nine darkness energies just to you know hit the max elixirs a bit easier but i took one darkness energies out to fit the enhanced hammer and that's the deck um i'm gonna show off two games that i had <laughs> um really quickly with the deck i hope you enjoy let me know if you have any feedback, um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and here are those games. Alright, so time to record about 24 minutes, 25 minutes worth of gameplay footage. I'm recording off my DSLR, well, I'm using my DSLR with my microphone attached as a glorified massive microphone. So if anything stuffs up, if I get to the end of this and realise that nothing actually recorded, I am going to be pretty shitty. So, I streamed earlier today, and by today I mean yesterday, by the time I actually upload this video, because some people have got to work, and I don't have time to... Whatever. Anyway, um, I know I'm supposed to be talking about what's actually happening in this game, but I'm probably going to spend more of the time just talking about just random shit and whatever. Anyway, so I'll just... First of all, I'm just going to comment on the overall quality of the video. So I was using the computer program that I use to stream with. That coupled with my computer that's now six years, well, five and a half years old, oh, kind of gets the job done, but settings are a bit pixely. Um, I had the settings set to 720p, which, yes, I know, very outdated. Uh, but next time I'll try bump it up 1080p. Um, yeah. So I recorded these two games. This first one's going to be quite short. Um, spoilers. Um, so this was my Umbreon deck versus Mega Gardevoir EX. And you're about to see how useful Crushing Hammer's 
uh, were in regards to playing against this deck. And I believe my opponent won the coin flip and is going first. And is, you know, having the typical Gardevoir uh, EX start where they play a bunch of shamans, do heaps of stuff. Unfortunately, he got a little bit unlucky with the Redditor um, start, but, you know, he's still having a pretty solid turn one with his Gardevoir's two spirit links and an N. I wasn't too fussed about this N. I mean, my hand wasn't the greatest. I didn't really want to Sycamore away an Umbreon and two double colors, so yeah, that was pretty good. The hand I got end into wasn't that much better, but it was still better than my last hand. Uh, he gets an energy onto the Gardevoir, which and I'm a little bit worried because Gardevoir in a matchup, in this matchup, I think Gardevoir could probably um, beat Umbreon. It hits for more damage. Um, I mean, I know both Pokemon resist each other, but yeah, in the end of the day, Gardevoir's hitting for higher numbers. So I get the Umbre I get the Evil Tail down, go for a Crushing Hammer, hope to hit hits, and I do get the energy off Gardevoir, that's great, slows the deck down. Go for the Max Elixirs, miss the first one, which, mm, typical. Go for the second one, and I actually get it, which is great. Get an energy onto Evil Tail, so it's there as an attacker if I need it. And I just go for the Sycamore, and yeah, draw a new hand. Uh, I get cards, Darkness Energy onto Evil Tail. And I've got the Reverse Valley in my hand, which is a uh, knockout on the Radita. So, yeah, not a bad start. Not a bad start, to be honest. So I'll play down the Reverse Valley. Make sure I've got the right side. Yep. And go for an Ultra Ball. I think I decide to Ultra Ball for Shaman. Yes, I do. Get rid of the Escape Rope. Figured I don't need it. Shaman, I'm going to throw the Float Stone onto Evil Tull. I figured I might as well, you know, retreat with something. Once I use Umbreon's attack. Strafe. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. Yeah. Go for the setup. Draw until I've got six. And boom. Not a bad hand. I've got the um, I got the EV for next turn. And I've got the DCEs to start using um, the attack. Shadow Bullet. Yeah, I was about to call it Night Spear. Shadow Bullet. So I go for the Strafe, KO the Radita with exactly 48, uh, 40 damage, and take my first prize. So yeah. Oh yeah, I should also say that, yeah, I'm recording these um, after I've played the game. So, yeah. Hopefully it goes pretty well. I also just realized and remembered that my camera has a 10 minute recording time limit. So hopefully, hopefully it doesn't cut out at an awkward moment because uh, my camera likes to do that. But that's alright. So he gets the Mega Gardevoir out and he gets an energy attached. I was thinking, alright, he might get a second energy on and knock out the Evil Tile. Not too concerned, but he gets the Radiator out, gets rid of the Float Stone, which, again, I wasn't too concerned about, especially if he decided to KO the Evil Tile. Sycamores gets a new hand. I Does he do anything? I can't remember. Actually, no. Jokes, I do. You're about to see. Nothing. Sweet. My turn. So, it's good for me. I get another Crushing Hammer. I didn't expect for this one to get heads, but it did. Um, so, he's even more stuffed. <laughs> hmm. Harsh words. So, I go for the energy onto Eevee. I figured I might as well just evolve it up. Get a second Umbreon out. And then he quits. Works for me. Quick win. So, yeah. Definitely... Crushing Hammers, MVP of that game, um, definitely came in handy when I needed it. Yep, yep, cool. That was game one. Cool, on to game two. This game was interesting, as you're about to see. It was actually a mirror match against a number, uh, against another Umbreon GX deck, but this one was using. The Jolteon, Flareon, Vaporeon evolutions, which, uh, as I said in my little preview, but I think, yeah, has the potential to be good. Pretty, pretty good. Anyway, yeah, so he's even got the Zoroax, which, hmm, Zoroax, still a good card. Anyway, at least he gets the Mulligan, so one extra card. 
Uh, I believe he won the coin flip, so he will be starting. Gets another mulligan. Works for me. So since we're waiting and this game's pretty long, um, what have I been up to? Well, I've been working. Yeah, working. I would say that I've been playing Pokemon, but you know, local card shop closed down, so haven't really had anywhere to play regularly. So, uh, I mean, I can't even go to a pre-release, which is, you know, some of my more preferred events to go to. <laughs> I have to go to Wellington to play pre-release events, which is not ideal, but at least Wellington's on a, only a two hour drive away, so it's still doable. And especially when there's a group of us, so we can definitely, I guess, split the split the costs down of driving down to Wellington, which is good fun. It was good fun. I went to the pre-release for Sun and Moon in Wellington, and not that it really matters about where you come or place, but I came sixth overall out of 19 people. So, woo. <sighs> so, this was an interesting matchup. Gets the Umbreon down with the ability, cool, and ends his turn. So I'm like, sweet. As I figured, I might as well just power up Evil Tile. I mean, my hand's not the greatest, but I figured if I can threaten Evil Tile with um, energies, then he might not want to power up Umbreon. So I throw on, I believe I throw on DCE onto Umbreon, uh, onto Evil Tile, just to threaten the, you know, just to threaten the KO. So I go for Max Elixir. I get the energy onto Eevee, so that's good. Did I chuck the energy? I'm pretty sure I put DCE onto Evil Tile. I put down Reverse Valley. I figured if he plays Reverse Valley, Valley, at least he can't get rid of it. Uh, so yeah, I chuck, D I chuck the DCE onto Umbreon and end my turn. I pretty much assumed that he was going to attach DCE. I knew he had Jolteon. As soon as he had Jolteon, I was, I was expecting Umbreon to... Uh, I was expecting Evil Tile to be knocked out this turn. And I got pretty lucky, as you're about to see. So he VS Seekers for N. Yep, plays N, which pretty much saves my bad, bad, bad hand. And, yeah, I'm sitting here thinking, oh, he's definitely going to get a DCE. I get end into a, a usable hand. I can I can work with this. So I've got cards. He goes for the trainer's mail. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, he doesn't have DCE. If he has the double colorless, he would have attached it by now. But he hasn't attached the double colorless yet. So he doesn't have it. Ultra Balls, this is clearly going to be for a Shaman. Yep, which it is. And I only just noticed then, but yeah, he discarded a Psychic Energy, which, you know, it's a bit odd. Why does he have a Psychic Energy? So he goes with the setup, draws four more cards. And he plays... Long Pause. Trainer's Mail, which pretty much tells me again that he probably doesn't have DCE, Double Color Synergy, which means he's probably still digging for it. Pause again, and then he evolves his second Eevee into an Espeon, which that was surprising. But then again, if you saw the Psychic Energy, then you probably would have seen it coming. So I read Psychic, it does 60 plus 30 for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon, which, you know, can rack up to be a lot of damage, especially with Jolteon. Ultra Balls some cards away, gets another Shaman, draws 5 cards, and still no double colorless energy. How can I tell? He paused for a very long time. Goes for the XP share onto Zoroark, which is an odd choice, but cool. Throws down the Psychic Energy onto Espeon, so he's got that now as a, a possible attacker. Goes for Strafe. Um, does hit for weakness, because he does have the Jolteon out, which, change, which adds uh, the Lightning type to his Umbreon GX. So it is hitting for weakness against the Evil Tile. It's for 60, 60, not 80, 60, switches into the Espeon, I figured, I mean, I guess he figured that, that would be able to tank some hits. I throw down Evil Tile, just as a, another attacker, go for Max Elixir, and decide to throw it onto Eevee. I figured I'm more likely to draw into a third energy than a double colorless, so Ultra Ball away my two, <laughs> my two Sycamores, and go for a Shaman. In my head, I was planning on using... Uh, Hex Maniac this turn. 
I was still planning on attacking with Evil Tile, which, as you're about to see, does not actually happen. Spoilers. So I dropped the DCE, no, so I dropped the Darkness Energy onto EV. Ugh, a lot of E's. Uh, click yes and evolve my first Umbreon. Or well, evolve into my first Umbreon. And I figured at this point, ooh, yes. And I figured at this point, I just go for N. And I draw a second EV and not a whole lot. But I did get Escape Rope, which works for me because now I get to switch out Evil Tile. I was going to retreat and get rid of the deep, double colorless energy, but I figured I could just escape rope. And I was very curious to see what he was going to escape rope into, what he, what he was going to switch into. Um, I figured he would switch into one of his shamans, maybe? Um, then I thought maybe he'd switch into Jolteon, but no, switches into his Umbreon. So I was like, okay, cool. I get a free attack on his Umbreon, and I'm fully powered up. Now, I was a little worried that he might attach a DCE and, you know, attack me back. And he's got a slightly better board state than I do, so I consider using Dark Call GX to discard both energies on his side of the field. Which is what I do. I get rid of his Psychic Energy and his Darkness Energy off of his Espeon and Umbreon. So I'm in a much better spot. I can do stuff. I've got a second Double Colorless. I've got Team Flare Grunt if he attaches to Umbreon. And I've got Sycamore to draw more cards if I need to. Sip, yep, waiting, waiting. I figured, I figured he'd put a darkness energy onto Umbreon and use Strafe. He hasn't gotten a double colorless down yet, so I figured maybe he doesn't play that many. Drops down a Faded Town, which uh, is an interesting choice of stadiums, but I guess there are still mega Pokemon, mega decks uh, out there. Plays the Professor Kukui, draws two cards and is attacked to 20 more damage this turn. Uses a stand-in by Jolteon, and he uh, and uses a stand-in with Zoroark, and Break Evolves into Zoroark Break. And he uses the Foul Play. I was kind of actually expecting him to use um, the GX attack, Foul Play, well, to copy my GX attack. But I think he just goes for Shadow Bullet. If I'm not mistaken, yes he does, Shadow Bullet, hitting me for 110 damage and 30 on the Evil Tile. I actually quite like the thought of Kukui in this deck using that supporter. Hitting for an extra 10 dam uh, extra, hitting for an extra 20 damage um, is not bad. And it took me a little while to realize how he got the extra 10 damage on, and I didn't. Yeah, I had to. It took me a bit to realize that he used Kukui. So. I put the DCE onto S onto EV. I was considering using T I was considering using Team Flare Grunt to get rid of the darkness energy, but I figured I might as well just do something else. Drew into the crushing hammer, so I got that off at least, so that was cool. Play the Max Elixir, miss the Max Elixir, and I just go for Shadow Bullet. This Umbreon's pretty much dead anyway. Well, at least if he attaches a double colorless and uses Zorark's main attack, it's guaranteed KO on Umbreon. Man, I took a long time to think about what attack to use. Yeah, so I go for the Shadow Bullet and I go for Shaman. I figured Shamans can be... I was like, Shamans are going to be my win condition. I'm going to knock out the Shamans and have them at least ready to KO if I can Lysander them out. But he attaches the double colorless, and that's bad. He knocks out my Umbreon with a lot of damage, and I don't really have... Well, I've got my other Espeon. Well, blah, blah, blah. And by that, I mean I've got my other Eevee. And I know there's another Umbreon in the deck because I saw it. So I attach the Darkness Energy onto Eevee. 
go for the energy evolution and evolve into my second Umbreon. Yep. Yep. So I've got the KO on the Zoroark. And I wasn't too sure what he'll do next. I almost decided to play Hex Maniac, but he has a huge hand. I checked my discard pile for N and decided to just bench the EV and VS Seeker for N. He has too many cards in his hand. I assumed he would have had options to get what he needs next turn, so I decided to just N. I've still got six prizes, so at least I'll get a decent hand size out of this. Uh, I draw into not a bad hand. Two VS Seekers, an N, Float Stone, Crushing Hammer, and a Darkness Energy. So I go for the Shadow Bullet, take the knockout on the Zoroark, get the 30 damage onto Shaman. So at least I got those two ready to go if I need to KO them. Sends up the Jolteon. It does have free retreat, which is handy. Gets down another EV. And at this point, I'm kind of curious to see what he's going to do. He has no energies on the field. Um, both his Umbreon and Espeon both, yeah, have nothing. I figured he had VS Seeker for an N, but no, VS Seeker's for a Sycamore. I guess he really needed to draw cards. Discards the other Evolutions. He doesn't need Vaporeon or Flareon, so... Fair enough. Gets rid of those. Goes for Ultra Ball. I figured he was going to get whatever other evolution he needs. Doesn't grab it. But then he plays a Darkness G and then evolves up anyway. So I kind of... I wasn't really sure what he was doing. But that's alright. Gets his Umbreon out. Still waiting for that energy attachment. Actually, no lie. He got the energy attachment. Goes for the Parallel City and this was when I thought I wasn't going to win the game. So there goes my easy win conditions on the Shaman. So I'm pretty much starting again from zero, and he's got the upper hand with the damage sort of on sh my Umbreon. So I figured at this point I need to get rid of the energy. I get very lucky with my Crushing Hammer, hit that, and get rid of his energy. So at this point I just need to get rid of his energies on the field. I can't let him get enough attachments to start using his own shadow bullets. I know that there's no other Pokemon that I can grab from my deck apart from Shaman, especially not with Nest Ball, so I just use Nest Ball just to get it out of my hand and to reduce card sizes if I get end. I attach the Dark Energy to Evil Tail. Yep, so I've got that as an attacker. It is one attack away from being KO'd, especially with a shadow bullet. But it's there, it's good to go. So I figured I could start racking up the damage on the Umbreons and Espeon. He doesn't have any energies and he doesn't have a way to easily retreat his Pokemon. So I figured if I can rack up the energy, then I can KO easily. Unfortunately, I don't have Reverse Valley down, so I can't easily two-hit KO an Umbreon unless I can do some fancy Lysander plays. Um, he puts the energy onto Espeon. Um, I go for the Crushing Hammer and miss it. But that's okay. I thought I had a Lysander in my deck, but I don't. Uh, in my discard pile, and I don't. And instead of clicking my deck, I accidentally hit the end turn button. I was supposed to attack, but I hit the end turn button. I was screaming at my computer on stream. When that happened, I was not happy. And there you go, there's me checking my deck for any Lysanders, and I don't have any. Uh, that was really, really, really bad. So I pretty much give my opponent a free turn to get sorted. He gets the Dark Energy onto Umbreon, and he goes for the Strafe. Gets the Strafe, hits the extra 20 damage because of Professor Kukui. And I get the VS Seeker, I figured I might as well just get rid of the energy off the Espeon. I don't want him to get a DCE and attach and do heaps of damage with uh, Espeon's second attack. Nor would I want him to use its GX attack, because that would be ridiculous to put 10 damage counters anywhere. So I figured I might as well just continue what I was doing before and rack up that damage. So I go for the Shadow Bullet and put the 30 onto the Umbreon. Because at least that way, Umbreon, if I can Lysander out, it's a KO. 
So that Umbreon is good to go in terms of an easy KO. Cool. So I'm making a comeback, especially from my little stuff up of clicking the <laughs> in turn button. Ugh. So he gets the double colorless onto Umbreon, and I'm kind of afraid. Because I don't know what he's going to do. If I had Lysander in my discard pile, I would have Via Seeker for Lysander. And I wasn't too sure what I was wanting to do. So I retreat into my Umbreon and check his discard pile. And he's got no more Via Seekers. Four Via Seekers in the discard pile. So I figured, okay, I'm fairly safe from potential Lysander plays. So I just go for the Shadow Bullet onto the Espeon, and I put the 30 damage onto his second Umbreon. I figured the Umbreon that's got the energies on it, it's going to come out at some point soon. So I don't need to worry about putting more damage onto it. So Umbreon hit that damage. Espeon's only got 30 left. And he attaches the energy to retreat it, and this is what caught me by surprise. I don't know why I didn't see it coming, but he uses Dark Call GX. The GX ability, or the GX attack, which gets rid of energies. And this was quite a critical play. Because I can't KO the Umbreon. I strife won't do enough damage, and I can't exactly retreat into Evil Tile either to do enough damage. At least not with what I've got right now. So, I have to hope that I get pretty, pretty lucky. I've got two double colorless energies in my deck. At least that's what I think I do. I'm not too sure. And I had two options. In or... Via Seeker for Sycamore and get rid of my last two, well, Via Seekers. I decided to go for N. I figured if I'm going to get lucky, I'll get lucky or not. And I don't get the double colors. But I figured I could check anyway. So I believe I use, yes, I use Super Rod to get back my Umbreons and two Darkness Energies. If worse comes to worse, I can power up another Umbreon and use it. Uh, I was tempted to Ultra Ball. I don't know why I didn't actually Ultra Ball, get rid of the Lysander and Via Seeker, but I figured I needed the Via Seeker. And this is the turn I got very, very, very lucky by drawing the double colors. This never happens to me in game. And I nearly Ultra Balled this turn because I wanted to get a Lysander in my discard pile in case. I got end and needed to via seeker for a line sender, but I didn't. So I go for the shadow bullet onto the Umbreon and also get the KO on the Espeon. And my opponent concedes the match. That game was both stressful and silly. But I pulled a I pulled the win, luckily, because as you saw, I accidentally clicked the end turn button, which was stupid. But there you go. Two games with my Umbreon GX deck. Is it good? Maybe. Is my version good? I don't know. Is it the best deck in the format? I don't know. I figured if I keep making these sorts of videos, they're not going to be anything serious. There's plenty of serious Pokemon trading card game YouTubers, and there doesn't need to be any more. So instead of keeping these super serious, I might just use these as excuses to just talk about whatever random stuff I want to talk about. So yeah, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think. If you can think of any ways to improve the quality of the video itself or the, or the audio, let me know. As I said, I'm using my Canon DSLR with my Rode video mic plugged in as the way to record this audio. When I recorded the intro bit, I was using my webcam, so that's why it sounds a little bit bad, or worse, in regards to this. Alright, cool. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.